I can say two words about this uh, actually adventure that we had and those are early mornings and many, many kilometers. We came here to actually help, help the environment and help the local communities. I first came up with, with the idea of Green Future project because I witnessed firsthand deforestation at a massive scale in Ecuador and decided that I couldn't just go on and, uh, and ignore it. And uh, I had a similar feeling coming, coming here. Green Future Project has always had a very specific focus on uh, land preservation and restoration, but uh, with the project we just set up in, uh, in Tana River, it becomes obvious that uh, the role on uh, humanitarian aid is, uh, is equally important. And uh, this is probably more apparent here in Kenya than it was in Ecuador. And I feel like we now realize how deeply intertwined are the social and environmental aspect. Here where we are, we are in Tana Delta, Tana River County, Tana Delta sub-county, and then the region is also Tana Delta. Success specifically Chara site, we are in a mangrove forest. We are doing mangrove reforestation projects. So here specifically we have nine species of mangrove. Someone may ask, why do reforestation? Reforestation is key because we are trying to increase the forest cover. And in return, a forest have various functions to the community, such as provisional services, uh, aesthetic services, and also it gives us foods, uh, food and goods and food, such as timber, firewood, women come here to collect to collect firewood, they come here to collect herbals, they come here. It also gives us fresh air and so, so on and so forth. Specifically mangrove, the main reason also we really need mangrove is a good carbon absorber. It usually, or Englishmen usually call it carbon sink. It absorbs more carbon from the environment, hence cleaning the environment in return to us humans because we have all those species present first you notice everything that they don't have but then suddenly as you really meet the, the people you start noticing everything that they do have and that we don't and the first thing is time uh, they work only a few hours every day due, due to the heat so they have a lot of time to spend to the community and they, they also need to invest a lot of time to move around but that gives them a lot of time with with their family a lot of time with their peers uh, the second thing is contempt they have way less than we do on definitely physical matters and uh, let's say benefits and comforts, but with the less that they have, they seem to be much more, much more happy. There's always a smile on their face, there's always this joke about to crack. Uh, and I think that that's probably something that you learn as you spend more and more time uh, with communities like, uh, like the one in Tana River. Let me bring, let me take you back. In our community where I come from, we have two local communities. In the past, they, it was a bit hostile because these guys never work together because they are not employed. Right now, if you employ both of them, they must they will learn from working from each other. Yeah. So in the future, I, I see success. In the future, I see success. Such project, I see success because it brings the harmony to the community. At the end of at the end of the year, at in the return. The environment is also taken care of it. The local community, and thanks to the local leadership through the Community Forest Association, they have a group known as Chara Community Forest Association. They do. The main reason of this group, or the main reason of this leadership of this group, they are at, at least creating that public awareness, that telling the local people that, you guys look, these are the causes of climate change, and for us to combat climate change, we need to conserve these mangroves. You know. When projects like this is going on, there is some returns back to the community, such as direct benefits, such as employment. When you create employment, someone who is employed, once he or she goes back home, he will tell the other one, hey guys, I'm conserving this mangrove because of this and this. So at the end of the year or at the end of the day, the information is moving around. Though some know, those others are not aware. But majority are aware. That's why they embrace such projects. When they come in their local settings, 
they are ready for it, they are eager for it. I think that we came here with, with an idea of, uh, you know, um, working with the community and, uh, and really financing them for uh, tree planting, uh, mangrove tree planting in the specifics. But uh, the moment we arrived, we realized that uh, there are obviously some very essential necessities that have to be fulfilled even before thinking of, uh, of developing a project. Why mangrove? Mangrove still as a local community, which you know you cannot do conservation without local community. Community is essential. In conservation, you must consider people. How, how are people benefiting from this conservation project or from this restoration project? So in return, as we protect the mangroves, we are helping the local communities. How? Through, you know, local community rely on mangroves, such as, you know, we have a group of beehives keepers. They can put their hives in the mangrove forest as, you know, that's their source of economy or economic activities. These old women who rely, you know, in setting, in setting, especially in Tana Delta setting, you know, the, we cannot call it the poverty index, but people are a bit economically disadvantaged. So they rely on cooking on firewood as the cooking option. So because they don't, they cannot afford gas. So as we conserve the mangroves in return, they may, at the end of the year or at the end of the time, they will collect firewood from mangroves. Also building, in the, such as, how do you call them, building posts or the poles, they can harvest poles with, with permit from the local CFA leadership. They can collect some little poles for construction and therefore yeah, and I think it leaves, um, it leaves something a bit stronger behind because you know that while following Green Future Project mission, which is dedicated to nature preservation and restoration, you're also concretely helping improve uh, uh, the life of, uh, of a number of community members, which starting uh, now will be hired full time. And I think the relationship with we've built are, are going to stay with us a long time. Wafula, Mubarak. Uh, we hope to build with them a, a long-lasting project that will last 40, 50, 60 years uh, and, and keep generating benefit to the community and fully restore uh, the degraded areas of, uh, of the Tana, Tana Delta River. We are so proud of being here today and uh, to take part into what is actually regenerating an ecosystem. So putting our hands in the mud, collaborating with the local communities, creating benefits for the environment and for the members of the local community and be able to really take part in the concrete phase of a project. The local people actually welcomed us as family. Um, and they are so committed to work hand in hand to improve the environment, to create benefits for their members and uh, to really help and commit to doing something that is beautiful and has a positive impact on a long term. And of course, the country itself. I mean, what can I say about this land? The vibrant colors, the vast landscapes and the nature are mesmerizing and uh, I mean for a natural lover like me it's pure joy to be here so um, it's it's incredible and I'm grateful for it really grateful maybe maybe we're looking the wrong way priorities and uh, that we have so much more to to learn than to give we come here with the idea of giving but I think uh, we go away with the idea of having learned much more than what we what we're given or we can give to, to this community.